And here we go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to BWTM Sports. In association with Round for Round Boxing, the new boxing game coming out on consoles, PC, Xbox, and PS4 in 2019. Tonight, we have another show coming out uh, with more revealing of another uh, fighter. So, um, without further ado, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Now, for people in the room, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning. Um, first piece of information, I've got to let you know. We're proud to announce that BWTM is now back online. So when you get a chance, get out there, check it out bwtmonline.com check it out one more time bwtmonline.com check that out people okay so i've done that then i've got to give a massive shout to uh someone His name is tom um from new zealand now he sent me a picture of um the BWTM logo on his screen um, about a couple of weeks ago. And he posted it to my Twitter page saying he's about to sit down and watch BWTM. Very inspirational. I want to say to you, Tom, thank you so much. Uh, we do know, we are aware that people are watching us from around the world, but it is great to hear, great to know, very inspirational at a time. But thank you so very much. It is the sort of inspiration you need at a time where things are difficult but thank you so much really appreciate you and of course as always don't forget to subscribe button yes mr lawrence in the room in the house good to see you all good my friend all good i'm really excited about the news we're going to be breaking tonight on uh, round for round boxing show tonight around 10 or 11 p.m tonight we're just waiting for confirmation okay so this video is called when boxing management goes wrong the david price story well, 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 the latest turn of events. We thought David Price was going to be fighting Sean Turner in a fight that, you know, a, a, a fight that Price should be winning. Now he's going to fight Sergey Kuzmin or Kuzmin. Um, <laughs> and that's a fight that's a totally different situation. If, for those of you who don't know, Sergey Kuzmin was the guy that knocked out um, George Joyce in the amateurs. Now, I I, I'm, I I don't see. I'm not impressed with Joe Joyce, to be honest. Um, well, I was looking at the fight between him, Kuzman, and uh, Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce hasn't improved that much. He's still sort of stiff and robotic, and I don't see what the big fuss is about Joe Joyce. But there are people in the UK who seem to love Joe Joyce, which is fine. I think he's a good he's a good fighter. I don't think he's as great as everyone's you know hyped him up to be because there's nothing really to suggest that he's that great at the moment anyway. Um, you know, if Lenroy Thomas is the, the litmus test, then um, surely, you know, the top tier heavyweights, top 20 heavyweights mean nothing. So um, uh, Joyce has got to get a move on with his career. So, yes, I know that uh, Kuzmin fought Mansour. Uh, the fight went and cuts. I'm aware of that. But uh, that that aside, <laughs> we saw Amir Mansour get... Uh, well and truly uh, dealt with by Herkovich the other day, or Herkovich. Um, I don't know how much time Mansell had to prepare. I don't know. When I look at a fight like that, Mansell, looked, his timing looked off. He just looked from round one like he just didn't want to be there. And I mean that in the sense that he just didn't. Nothing was working right for Mansell in the fight. Um, so for me, I uh, think that... Uh, when I when I looked at that Mansour fight, I thought I felt sorry for Mansour. But from the first round, you could see that it was not going to be a Mansour fight. There was a there was a distance that Mansour needed to be in. He didn't need to be too close in, but he didn't need to be too far away. He needed to be just to be at the end of that. He needed uh, Perkovich to be at the end of that left hand, just at the end of it. But Perkovich was was so such a good enough boxer to be able to get himself out of range, so that left hand, straight left hand would just miss her would just miss his chin, and Hergovic was able to counter over the top. Nice, good stepping back with footwork and get himself into position. So Hergovic, you know, did very well against um, Mansour, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about David Price. Now, let's take you back. 
David Price is somebody I actually do like. Um, I do like him as a boxer. I just think he's been badly managed. Okay, so let's take you back to David Price. Before he got beat, and he chalked up a set of wins up until he fought Audley Harrison. Now, when he fought Audley Harrison and he destroyed Audley Harrison around, um, you know, boxing fans were like, well, UK boxing fans were like, David Price! He should fight the Klitschko's. David Price, next heavyweight champion of the world. David Price. You know, David Price, you know, if he hits anybody in the heavyweight division, they're all going to get knocked out. But David Price didn't fought anybody who was really going to put up any real opposition to him. Until he fought Matt Skelton. And then the Matt Skelton fight, Matt Skelton was able to get on Price's chest with relative ease. And that brought alarm bells to uh, boxing fans. That was in the know. That brought alarm bells that Max Skelton was able to get inside on David Price as easy as he did. Now, the Tony Thompson fight for me has a personal touch to it because I was kind of involved with that fight, not involved with the fight itself, but I was kind of more involved with, um, I was more involved with, uh, when it, in terms of the Price fight with Tony Thompson, I was in, involved with, well, two things were going on at that time. When I remember this in particular, this particular situation, David Price was... No, Tyson Fury is due to fight Steve Cunningham. Okay? Now, Frank Maloney was calling out uh, uh, Tony, Tony Tyson Fury to fight David Price. And uh, Tyson called him Baloney. Um, so you, if you remember that, Price v Fury was a, a big fight. That was a fight that British boxing wanted to see. Anyway, uh, Fury made his move. He said, you know what? I want to fight Steve Cunningham. So Price's management at the time thought, well, if he's going to fight Steve Cunningham, well, we're going to go and fight Tony Thompson. Tony Thompson wasn't bothering anybody. Tony Thompson wasn't a mandatory. Tony Thompson wasn't a voluntary. Tony Thompson was minding his own business. But Frank Maloney at the time, decided to stick David Price in with a veteran that was experienced. Now, I was made a laughing. People laughed at me at the time. And I said that it would be a Southpaw that would beat David Price. He struggled with Southpaws as an amateur. And as a pro, he was getting beaten up. Uh, he was getting beaten up, inspiring a lot by Southpaws, I understand. And also... Uh, from what I also understand from this fight as well, for, from from David Price, was that that Tony Thompson fight was just to outshine um, Tyson Fury. That's what they wanted to do. They wanted to get ahead of Tyson in the rankings. That's why that fight happened. And I remember it because I remember having a bad feeling. Even though I thought that David Price was going to win the fight, I had a bad feeling like, a couple of days before, because I had the Maloney interview set up, I'd spoken to David Price's um, trainer at the time, Fanny, Franny Smith. And you can check that out on my on Bayloric TV. Spoke to Franny Smith, and he basically said that David Price would walk through Tyson Fury. Fury and his team weren't happy about that. That caused a complete uproar between Fury and, and, and uh, Price at the time. We're going back years now. Um, and that was around a similar time that I first started talking to Tyson. And Tyson said, let me tell you something about David Price. Price is the kind of guy that um, if I looked at him, I said to him, what's your problem, mate? We want to slap. Price would put his head down. So Tyson Fury had David Price measure in terms of his mentality a long time ago. And he said, and he warned of David Price's demise because he didn't think David Price had what it took. He fairly lacked a lot of confidence. And, and that would be his downfall. Of course, no sooner Tyson got off the deck to win against uh, uh, Steve Cunningham that David Price was on the deck, unable to recover from a punch, which was round the back of the ear or something like that. And that's what they said. According to Steve Bunce, it was a lucky punch. And I was furious at that at the time because I said, there is no such thing as a lucky punch in boxing. That is what you're meant to do in the sport. You're in the ring. 
to throw a punch. That's what you do. Nothing lucky about it. Price got hit with a good shot, went down, and you couldn't get up for it. Then there was everyone talking. Now, before the Tony Thompson fight, remember, there was even talk from a certain cruiserweight who might be fighting Usyk now that um, he said that David Price was ready for was ready for the clinch guys. You remember that? I must, he said that. He said that. And remember when Sky will say, we've got David Price in the studio now. He's going to be watching over the clinch goals. And remember all that rubbish? Anyway, the Tony Thompson fight happened. Got knocked out. Then you had people in the studio saying, oh, well, you know, mate, well, I, I think it was a bit of a, a fluke. You know, it, it, Thompson, it weren't really, a, you know, uh, it was a lucky punch, you know. And, uh, oh, Pricey will come again. Stick a ten on Pricey. Pricey will come again. I think you should take the rematch. I think you should take a definite rematch against Tony Thompson. Listen, you didn't need to take the, the rematch against Tony Thompson. He didn't. He did not need to take that rematch. He could have swerved Tony Thompson. There was no need to be fighting Tony Thompson in the first place. Then he brings in Lennox Lewis into his, his camp. Lennox Lewis, former undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Great bringing Lennox into the, into, into the, the equation. But Lennox... For first of all, had never fought a South Point in his professional career. One. And two, who had Lennox Lewis trained? Who had Lennox Lewis trained for him to take on the mantle for, for David Price? Lennox and Price, for me, was never a good match. He needed an experienced trainer, a Tommy Brooks, a James Earl Bashir, you know, uh, you know, a Buddy McGurk. At least somebody with some credentials as a trainer. I'm not saying Lennox Lewis wouldn't have made a good trainer. But when you were in a situation like Price was in, he didn't need to be taking chances and going gambling on trainers. Well, anyway, Thompson goes back and fights Price again. We all know the result. Price gets bashed up. And I think Price came out to the ring. I think it's it uh, crazy ballers. I think he came out to the ring or something like that, or the big payback. But it was all wrong. According to reports the reports say that lennox lewis wanted camp uh, price in camp and price didn't want to stay in camp price didn't want to come to canada price wanted to do everything at home that was the problem and so lennox couldn't commit to price price lennox i think price wanted price away from um liverpool and uh price had any other ideas anyway so price gets knocked up by thompson he comes back he gets tommy brooks on board and I think he goes with the Sowlands, if I'm correct. Goes with the Sowlands. Okay. And racks up a set of wins under Tommy Brooks. Was doing the right thing. Was doing the right thing. You know, the guys weren't great. He was building his confidence up. And then he goes and fights Ergen Tepper for the European title. Bit of a chance. Fights Ergen Tepper, gets absolutely destroyed by Ergen Tepper. Then it comes out Ergen Tepper's been on some drugs. Okay. Then he comes back, fights two guys, and then fights Christian Hammer. Now, the Christian Hammer fight we know about at that time, with those two fights, was when he was under with Dave Colwell. Left Tommy Brooks. Tommy Brooks said to me, in an interview, you can go and check that out. Tommy Brooks said, listen, David Price, I was training David Price. And I tell David to do one thing, and David would go and do something totally different. Okay? That's what Tommy Brooks told me in an interview. Tommy Brooks, Hall of Fame trainer. He's been with, worked with Klitsch Goals, Mike Tyson, you know, um, Lennox Lewis. Tommy Brooks has worked with some of the top fighters in the world. He's experienced top heavyweights. So he had a great training with him. You could see that Brooks was giving Price a little bit more upper body movement. You could see he was giving him some defensive work. But Price still doing his own thing. Still messing around, not throwing the jab the way he should do. Fights Chris, uh, and, and then after that, obviously, he switches over trainers after the Tepper fight. Goes to Dave Colwell. I predicted that he'll get a couple of fights under Colwell. And then they'll stick him in a big fight and it will all go pay-shaped. What happened? He fought Christian Hammer at some whopping weight and gets absolutely starched by Hammer. He drops Hammer in the process, but ends up 
run out of gas and get knocked up by Christian Hammer. Okay. Or Hamer, however you want to call it. The Sokolowski comeback fight. Price looked like he was struggling in that fight against Sokolowski. And then what did he do? They stick him in with arguably one of the, uh, the top three best heavyweights in the world, Alexander Povetkin. What the heck are you fighting Alexander Povetkin for? He wasn't a mandatory. He wasn't a voluntary. It wasn't a title defense. What the hell are you doing with Alexander Povetkin? So Povetkin, uh, Hamer was for uh, the, uh, what was one of those fights. He didn't need to fight Hamer, Hammer at the time. He didn't need to fight Povetkin. He wasn't ready for Povetkin. You don't go from fighting Sokolowski to Povetkin, but you go, but he went and fought Povetkin, right? I mean, in the build up to the Tepper fight, he had three fights, but those guys he fought and he beat going up to the Tepper fight, there was nothing for him to suggest he was ready for that European title shot. But anyway, it seems that whoever manages Price is looking for quick money grabs. It's what it seems like to me. Quick money grabs and badly advised. Now again, Sokolovsky gets past Sokolovsky, gets the Povetkin fight. Everyone talks about the short left talk that wobbled Povetkin. But ultimately, class tells Price gets knocked out. Now Price was meant to come back and fight against um, Sam, uh, Turner, the, the Irish heavyweight. That He pulls out from that. In step Sergey Kuzmin. Now Ser Sergey Sergey Kuzmin has a record of he's got twelve fights. Okay, if you look at the record that uh, Ergen Tepper had, he had fourteen fights. Um, to go down a bit more. So yeah, for me, why Price is taking this fight, I don't know, but I will say this much. I will say this much. A lot of people I've seen across social media talking about um, Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn's ruthless. Eddie Hearn, Eddie Hearn, Eddie Hearn. On this occasion, I will defend Eddie Hearn. And I will say this much. I will even defend Dave Colwell. I will defend Tommy Brooks. The one person that seems to come up every single time in these situations is David Price. I blame David Price solely for every single one of these decisions being made. Somebody said, who's the manager do this? I don't think it's a manager. I don't think it's a promoter. I think it's David Price himself. I think it's David Price himself. Look at him hopping from trainer to trainer to trainer to trainer. One thing. Secondly, the decisions and who you decide to fight. I mean, who is making these decisions? Nobody can make David Price get in a ring and fight. Nobody can make him do that. If he signs a contract that says, you're going to fight two stiffs, and then I'm going to stick you in with somebody who's ranked in the top 10. That's David Price's problem. No, he's forcing to put a pen to paper and write. And if they have, there's a problem. So for me... The fault lies splat bang on David Price. I'm not going to go and blame Eddie Hearn or blame Dave Colwell or blame this person or blame that person. You know within yourself if something's right or it's not right. That's like that, that consciousness, that, that inner self, that, that gut check, that thing says, you know, that ain't right. David Price has been around long enough. He had an extensive amateur, amateur career. But for some reason, either he's listening to somebody again he takes responsibility for it because you can have people munter in your ear. You can have people munter in your ear, but it's, it's how you decide to respond to that muntering and that crap that's been talked. He could have quite happily said, you know what? I'm not taking a Tony Thompson rematch. There's some areas in my boxing I need to improve on and I'm not good enough yet. He could have come on camera and said, you know what? All this talk about me and Klitschko and blah, blah, blah. No, not good enough yet. I need to go back to the drawing board and I need to get things right. But some people in life are not don't take accountability for, for their for their actions. They don't take accountability for what they're doing. Some fighters just don't take accountability. They're blaming the trainer. They're blaming the management. You set that management up. You set that team up. You did that.
because ultimately you're the man that says yes and you're the man that says no. So for me, I don't blame I don't blame any of the trainers now. Now, ultimately, the other day we had James Ellie Bashir on who said, you know what? I said the other day that David Price was shot. But you know what I like about David Price? He keeps coming back. James Ellie Bashir was willing to train David Price. James Ellie Bashir willing to train David Price. Nah. So he's gone to Derry Matthews. No disrespect to Derry Matthews. But how can you go from Hall of Fame trainer Tommy Brooks to Derry Matthews? I mean, you jump from Tom, Tommy, Tommy Brooks to Dave Colwell. Okay, David's done some things in his career, all right? You can't knock what he's done with to Tony Bellew, all right? And he's done some things with some other fighters as well, all right? But then you go to Derry Matthews. You may as well have gone to Lennox Lewis. So the bottom line is, and again, it's not a slate on Derry Matthews here. I just think at the end of the day, for me, it's decisions that Price has been making. And I just think someone has gone and said, you know what? Pricey, will you take the fight? Do you want to fight against Kuzman? Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. How much are you getting paid? Okay. okay. Oh, I'll take that. And off he goes. I'll tell you, when David Price retires, he retires, he may say, you know, I fought the best. But when he sits back and he can't box no more, He's going to sit back and he's going, what did I do with my career? Deontay Wilder is the way you have your boxing career. Deontay Wilder, the way Hot Wilder has run it, had his career run, that's how you run a boxing career. You can say you want about Deontay Wilder, cab drivers and what not, and you can slate him and you can say he can't box and you can say this and you can say that. Fundamentally, fundamentally, price is set up better. The Wilder, fundamentally, the jab, the right hand, the left hook. But Price can't throw a jab to keep somebody up. He's got it all there. But Price still, up for all his professional career, doesn't know how to throw a left jab. Not effectively enough. And that's half the reason why he gets knocked out in fights. Because he can't control distance. He just pitter-patters with a jab. So guys just walk past the jab, they step inside, they've got no business getting on inside in price, they step inside, crack. Same old story. Same old story. Hands drop down, price and card are the same. They, they're just two of the same type of person. Two of the same kind of person. They make the same mistakes over and over and over again. Hands go low, don't put the jab out, throw punches, put themselves in positions, dangerous positions, and get nail with shots. That's what happens. They're just being brutally honest. So, um, David Price, I think, I think David Price had every chance to become world heavyweight champion if he had made the right moves. If he had learned to throw the jab correctly. Because Klitschko's career was based, he had a dodgy chin or a rock, uh, he didn't have a great chin, but Emmanuel Stewart gave him a defense. The, the big jab and the right hand and tying people up and leaning on them, that's what made Klitschko as successful as he was. I heard stories that he was, in, um, that uh, Price was even invited at one point to, to train with Peter Fury. I heard he was invited to go down to the Klitschko camp. And somebody said here just a minute ago, uh, BPM says Lewis was the one who convinced Price to immediately take the Thompson rematch. Yeah, because Lennox took immediate rematches, didn't he? Uh, the fight he had against McCall wasn't an immediate rematch. I think the fight against Rackman, did he have an immediate rematch with Rackman? I'm, I can't remember if he did. Somebody have to check me on the Rackman one. But um, you talk about two different situations. Lennox Lewis, when he got knocked out by Rackman, he wasn't prepared mentally for that fight. He'd come off Ocean's Eleven, and he'd just gone down to South Africa, and he didn't—he he didn't acclimatize right. I remember reading on on BBC on Teletext at the time. Lennox Lewis has arrived in South Africa, and the sports scientists and people were saying, "What the hell is this man coming in a week before the fight in South Africa to fight Rackman?" 
He hasn't acclimatised. So my man's gasping for breath in South Africa. He gets knocked out, serves him right. That's the sort of arrogance Lennox had in his career. So I don't, I don't think, even if Lennox did say that, like I said earlier on, accountability. He could have said, you know what? I ain't ready for this, man. My manager doesn't know if he, no, don't disrespect. My manager's going through some things at the moment. Frank Maloney at the time, then, was was uh, having, every time Price was fighting, he was having near near heart attack and fainting. Do you really need that as you, you're, when your manager's more nervous than you, when you're, you're nervous wrecking, you look to your manager. You're nervous, you look to your manager. Your manager's shitting itself in the corner and you're shitting yourself. Well, that's not a great combination, is it? I mean, ultimately, David Price, David Price is, has made some poor decisions. Now on to this fight. Can he beat Kuzman? Now, Kuzman, from what I've noticed, from what I've seen of him, he's got one punch, which is the right hand. A big right hand he's got. But he's predictable with that right hand. What Kuzman does, he leads you up, he, double, he, he throws up his jab, he throw up the jab. Kuzman's like, he'll do this for you, Kuzman. Let me get Kuzman for you. Let me, let me describe how Kuzman fights. He'll get his jab and he'll go... Let me get this right. Hold on. Kuzma will go. He'll go. Bing, bing, bing with the jab. And then he'll throw a right hand over the top. Kuzma's got an overhand right. He either he, he overhands or goes straight. But what Kuzma will do, use the jab to step inside, let himself get himself in, and throw the right hand, a short right hand, over the top against Toro opponents. All you have to do is look at the Joe Joyce fight. The Joe Joyce fight is a good example of what Kuzma will do. Use the jab. Get in uh, as a range fighter, get inside and throw the right hand. Doesn't throw much of a left hook. So Price has got to be able to... Uh, the other thing about Kuzman, what he does do, he's got a bad habit of dropping his left hand and his right... He drops his hand, his left hand, his leading hand, his left hand, and leaves all that exposed. So he's there to be knocked out, Kuzman. He's got a bad habit of doing that. He jabs, but leaves all this exposed. Price can drop a right hand on that. So if I'm Price, I'm using, you've got to use nice, stiff jab at Kuzman. Stiff jab. And when he goes to throw his right hand, you throw your right hand. Jab, 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 and hit him. Bang with the right hand. When he comes in close, hit him with the uppercut and hold him. Price doesn't know about that kind of stuff. Price has got to hit Kuzman hard with the left jab. But Price, is, Price has still got that flimsy left jab. And that's the reason why half of his career, or the majority of his career, is where it is today. Getting hit with punches he shouldn't be getting hit with, and getting hit with, with, with hooks and shots that he had no business being anywhere near because he stops using the jab, and the jab, which is the key punch to keep him out, is ineffective. So that's... Can he beat Kuzman? Yeah, he's, he's got the equipment to do it. Will he beat him? That's a different question altogether. Kuzman is the type of guy, Sergei Kuzman looks the kind of guy who's going to walk in, walk in on you and throw big bombs. Price don't like them kind of guys. Price likes the guy who's going to stand and look at him so he can take his time and flick a jab. Kuzman, I would say, is more aggressive than Povetkin in his mentality, but not as good as Povetkin because Povetkin can knock you out with either hand. Kuzman is really loading up with that right hand. So, don't make excuses for Joe Joyce. He got caught with a shot and that was it. Don't make excuses for Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce is not that good. He's okay. He's not, but don't make excuses for Joe Joyce. He got caught cold. What do you mean he got caught cold? Uh, Joyce was caught cold for the Cousin fight. Joyce didn't warm up before the fight and had to rush to the ring. <laughs> well, still a good punch, regardless. If he warmed up, he didn't warm up. It's still a good punch. And uh, I don't know how much more warming up Joyce could do because I don't see Joe Joyce as a guy that's very... Uh, uh, he's not loose. Do you know what I mean? He's a very good fighter, Kuzman. He's a very good fighter. But he has limitations. And I'm telling you what those limitations are. The short right hand is what... If he's going to knock Price out, it'll be the right hand. And it will come... The right hand will come either over the top, through the middle. He's a short right hand when he gets close. A short right hand he throws, which he'll double up. The, how he'll do it, he'll double up the jab. He'll walk Price to the ropes and a short right hand he'll throw. Or he'll double up the jab, 
or we'll throw the right hand over the top. Those are the two shots that Kuzman, forget the amateurs, this is what Kuzman will do. He hasn't changed that much. If you look at Kuzman highlights, he does the same thing in all his fights. He's very right hand happy, very right hand happy. He's always looking for a place for that right hand. And the best, as Price has got longer hand, the best way to do that is to ram a left jab straight down his head. Every time he goes to go, if he goes to go with a double jab, boom, the own jab straight back. As soon as he goes, because that's what, that's how Kuzman is programmed. Double jab, triple jab, right hand. He's just looking to load up with a right hand. He gets right hand happy. And because of that, I think Price is able to drop a right hand over the top on him. He's got the longer reach. Will he use it? <laughs> I doubt it. But if he does, and he can drop that right hand on Kuzman. And the other thing is, even if he drops Kuzman. Oh, Jimmy. These Price supporters out there who get excited because he rocked Provetkin with a jab. And I was excited or hook. I was excited for, for Price too. But Price, has he even got that killer instinct anymore? Has he got the ability to when he likes, when he gets you hurt, can he finish you off? That, I, don't, I don't hear anybody in the boxing community saying, well, if he hits him with a shot, he knocks him out. Well, no. When he, as Price moves up in class, he might take more than one shot to knock a guy out. But he, who of class, of real world class, or even European class, has David Price knocked out with one shot? He's got the power to hurt you with that one shot. Boom. But then who does he knock out? He hasn't knocked anybody out. He's got the power to hurt you. But he hasn't got the instinct to finish you off at this level. I really don't. I don't think. I don't think. I think. I don't think Price believes he wins. He's going to win these fights. I really don't. I really don't. And as stupid as that sounds, I really don't. Because if he believed he was going to beat Povetkin, when he had Povetkin stumbling across the ropes, uh, across the ring, he should have jumped on Povetkin and said, this is my opportunity. I'm going to seize the moment. But did you see that from David Price? No. You say back, punching his shoulders. Waiting for what? Waiting for what? What, Christmas to come? Looking at Povetkin. So, of course, you look at Povetkin. Povetkin says, okay, you want to look at something? I'll give you something to look at. Boom, boom. Price up before he hits the deck. I'll give you something to look at. I hope Price has learned his lesson. If he hits Kuzman and he hurts him, get in there and take him out. Take him out. Yeah, the fight is next. I believe the, the fight is the undercard of uh, uh, Anthony Joshua against Povetkin. So that's next week. Uh, next weekend, Price fights against Kuzman. And, you know, Kuzman from from Sean Turner to Kuzman. Yeah, that's a, that's a big jump. That's a big jump. Uh, Price dropped Thompson and got stopped. Dropped Hammer and got stopped. Price, not the best finisher and has very slow feet at his best, but now he's old at 36. Now, listen, that's a valid point there. Um, Thompson, experienced. Hammer, experienced. Experienced, guys. Remember, you look at where Price was. He was blowing guys away that had, you know, they, they were experienced the point, but they weren't good. These guys talk about Hammer and, and Thompson, they're world-ranked fighters. There's a difference. So they've they've seen the way they've seen themselves around the block a couple of times. So Price moved from fighting guys that he was meant to blow away to fighting a guy that the gap between Tony Thompson and Matt Skelton, there's a big difference in guile. In boxing ability. You know. Because. <sighs> um, we can't wind back. Mother uh, f mother time. Can we? Nor can we gamble with our health. I agree with you there. I do agree. Uh, Reverend Pickle says. That's all in the head Ingram. Some trainers are very good at getting into fighters heads. Tips was great. Fury the same. Yes. I agree. I agree. I agree with you there. 
Let me see what people are saying in the room at least. I want to hear what people are saying. It'd be great to hear what they're saying. Ah, oh, world breaker in the room, brother. I could see you in the room. Salute, brother. I'm biased or biased boxing talk. Good to see you in the room. McGregor's boxing stars. Good to see you in the room, brother. Manny Stewart said that David Price, uh, BPM says, good to see you. Uh, Manny Stewart says, David Price doesn't have what he takes mentally. Stewart predicted three would be the next world champion after Klitschko to 2012. Yes. P Price is superb. Guarantee knockout. Oh, dear. <laughs> Lennox Lewis said David Price liked to cut corners in training and wasn't willing to commit to the jab. Lewis said for a big man with one punch power, he had a very weak jab. Well, yeah, that's very, 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 very clear to see. World breaker fighters, that, that is why there is a, an Ali low in America for boxers. And the size of that, and, and, and a man of that size, BPM, should have a sledge, have a jab. I agree. Who is matchmaking for Eddie? I don't think I don't think it makes a difference. To be honest, I think David Price was free, and I thought, oh, well, all right, Price he hasn't got Turner, so I'd like to know how much Kuzman's been training on and where what he was doing at the time, and how soon he knew about the Price fight. Is Price even a good a top of scouse anymore? I think Dickinson would be a good fight. Wow. Wow. Right, so my thoughts are with David Price at this time. How he's got himself in this position, I don't know. Why he's taking this fight, I don't know. But I do fear for this guy. The last time he got knocked out by Povetkin, it was packed. It was it, when he got laid out like a carpet by Tepper. That was bad. When he got knocked out by by Povetkin, that was horrific. Now he was out before he hit the deck. It's not good. I heard a story the other day, boxing fans. I want to share this with you. I heard a story the other day. It came out of America. It was an American that told me this. And they told me this. They said that a big promoter, big time promoter in America said this. They either they avoid cat scans or they don't invest in cat scans because it's another fighter. They cut. They, that's another body. They um, would be unable to use if all the brain scans came back saying there were problems on the brain with the fighters, half the fighters would not fight if cat scans and brain, if there were brain scans. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? That there are fighters that are currently boxing that are not getting cat scans in the States. And the lawyers and solicitors are saying, yeah, that's because basically if it does show up, they can't box. That loses us money. That is some real, real, real. Oh, dear. Malik Scott would have been a price, a fight for price. At least Scott is not a puncher. Yes. Can anybody answer this? After a bad knockout, how long is it before fighters can get back in the ring? Surely there's a time period. Yeah, I think it's 90 days. I think it's 90 days. Price went from Olympic bronze, not prospect. A potential... Yeah, look at that. Olympic bronze, yeah, which is what Deontay had. Hot prospect, potential future world champion to being... Expect to get knocked by 12 and 0 Kuzmin. That, that's what happens, ladies and gentlemen, when boxing management goes wrong.
I want to leave you with this little message of inspiration. If you're a young fighter out there watching this and you're a fighter out there watching this and your career isn't quite going there, you know, you, you're a fighter, you haven't signed, been signed by a big promoter yet, here's hope. A young man by the name of Mahoub Fazeldin. Now I would meet Muslim Mahim, would sit down, we'd talk off camera, get out, go out and get something to drink, coffee, tea, whatever. And um, often I'd go and see Mahim. When I saw Mahib, he'd be real down upset. You know, he wanted to fight, wanted to have fights, wanted to be on the big stage. No promoter. I said, Mahib, take your time. Keep working, keep working, keep working. You will sign to Big Promoter. You will just trust me on this. But, but, but I said, listen to me. Trust me, you will sign to a Big Promoter. Was I wrong or was I right? He now signs with Frank Warren. Just have to just believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. And even when it might visually never trust your eyes never trust your eyes trust your inner self get the light inside yourself and believe in yourself from within that's key believe in yourself from within regardless of how it might seem on the outside just keep working keep putting that working keep working keep working keep working and when you're having a tough time dig even even harder keep going right i'm out for now i'll be back in a moment another fight that's about to be announced <laughs> I can't believe we're going to be watching this again. I'll see you soon. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, leave your comments. I love to hear your comments. I love to read your comments. You know, within reason, those comments that are um, constructive and uh, not abusive. And uh, a little message to my troll friend that likes to hit the dislike button to all the videos. Um, a little message to you. Um, I don't understand if you don't like a video, if you don't like videos, why watch them and dislike them? I don't get it. Never understood it. Doesn't make sense. But I'm leaving a message just to you. Here's my challenge to you. Let's talk about this. If you don't like a video, instead of just disliking it, tell me why you dislike it and how I can how we can improve for you to enjoy these videos i noticed the videos you dislike and there is a current pattern uh, there's a pattern behind the videos you dislike so those of you who dislike videos let me know why you dislike the videos how can we improve we're all about improving videos so i'm out now take care and we'll speak soon i'll be back shortly with another live video